Hello viewers, welcome to this episode of Healthy India. Today we are going to talk about inflammation of the pancreas, also called pancreatitis. The pancreas, as you know, is a small flat gland which lies behind our stomach in our abdomen. But this gland does many functions for our body. It's a very important digestive gland. It produces enzymes that digest the most difficult to digest food also. In fact, when we were students, we were told the pancreas is a bag of enzymes. And if those leak, it can digest itself also. That's the pancreas, one part of the pancreas. The other part of the pancreas concerns us endocrinologists, which is the insulin secreting and the glucagon secreting part of the pancreas. So there's a digestive or exocrine function of the pancreas and an endocrine or glucose regulatory function of the pancreas. Pancreatitis is a, is a condition that sometimes can be serious. And to discuss all about pancreatitis today, we have two of the finest experts in the country with us. We have Professor Anup Saraya, Chief of uh, Gastroenterology at, and Human Nutrition at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. And we have Dr. Anil Arora, who's chairman at the Institute of Gastroenterology at the Sir Gangaram Hospital, again in Delhi. So let me start with you, uh, Dr. Saraya, and what are the types of pancreatitis? Is it all just one? Or there are many types of pancreatitis? There are many types. In, in fact, if we say that it may be acute pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis, these are two, yes, two types of pancreatitis. Broad types, acute broad and chronic. Type. Yes. And then in acute, uh, whenever there is inflammation, what will happen? The pancreas will be swollen. There may be swelling in the surrounding pancreas as well. So we call it as interstitial pancreatitis or mild pancreatitis. Then in, in severe disease, there may be necrosis or destruction of pancreatic tissue as well as surrounding tissue. So that is necrotizing pancreatitis. In initial stages, there is generally a bimodal uh, presentation. Initial stage is because of certain toxins or, endo or what we call as uh, cytokines. Due to cytokine release, there may be certain features in pan pancreatitis. Patient may have certain organ involvement as well. But this is the first phase, which is because of systemic inflammatory response. And then comes the second phase, when inflammatory response is settling down and that is CARS or compensatory phase where this inflammation settles down, organ failure may improve and then comes the third phase that is after two weeks when infection sets in. So if there is necrosis, then it will be infected necrosis. If there is just collection around the pancreas, then it may be infected collection or pseudocyst after four weeks. So, so in pancreas, is this is the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. So in acute pancreatitis, initially we have destruction of the pancreas and the surrounding tissue. There may be fat necrosis. Then comes a stage where there is organ failure if the disease is severe. Initially in mild disease, there is no organ failure. If there is transient organ failure, we say it is moderate disease. And if there is persistent organ failure, that is after 48 hours or local complication, in form of collections, then we say that this is severe disease. So that is the spectrum of acute, acute pancreatitis. And chronic? In chronic pancreatitis, there is irreversible damage of what you have said already of SNR tissue and the, there is a lot of fibrosis. So pancreas patient is having recurrent episodes of pancreatitis, of inflammation, leading to a scar formation in the pancreas in form of fibrosis and destruction of endocrine and exocrine tissue. So it's a chronic disease where changes are irreversible. So that is chronic pancreatitis. And there are three cardinal features for that also. Patient may have pain, may have diabetes, or may have steatoria. When there is destruction of SNI, so exocrine part is gone, and those patients will have malabsorption and steatoria. If endocrine function is impaired, then they have diabetes and due to recurrent inflammation, patients have pain. So uh, in chronic pancreatitis, that means 
people have both problems with digestion as well as with their insulin glucose metabolism because both parts of the pancreas get affected and you can have a lot of fat passage in the stool, you know, poor absorption of fat and that is called steatorrhea and of course you can have diabetes and of course even in acute pancreatitis sometimes you get very high blood sugars because of inflammation yes, of yes. the endocrine aspects of the pancreas. So I think uh, very important uh, features there. But Dr. Ora, how do we recognize pancreatitis? How, what are the clinical features? You know, any abdominal pain uh, can be pancreatitis. Uh, how do you explain yeah. that to your patients? You see, pancreatitis is a very definitive entity, which is not something which should be taken lightly. Now, as you very rightly said in your introductory remarks, that this is an organ which is full of digestive enzymes. These enzymes are so potent that they can not only digest the most difficult to digest food, but once they get activated, in, in the areas other than the lumen of the intestine, they will start digesting the surrounding tissues. tissues. So the basic clue to the pancreatitis is, if you have a moderate to severe sudden onset of pain in the upper abdomen, especially if it goes to the back, I think that is the biggest clue. If this. you have had a binge of alcohol, if it is a severe exacerbating pain requiring injection with vomiting and when it radiates to the back, that is the time we should have an earliest suspicion of pancreatitis. We should not, so many times we take it as just gas formation or food poisoning or overeating and we just to time, tend to pass it off. If we diagnose it early, then I think if we consult a doctor, the two simple tests which can clinch a diagnosis are a sim simple serum amylase and serum lipase level. So our serum amylase will be raised within minutes to hours of the acute onset of pancreatitis. And if you can have an access to the ultrasonography, that is an extremely good modality to make a quick diagnosis of pancreatitis. A delayed diagnosis not only complicates the matter, Dr. Amarish will be surprised to know that we have had patients in our own hospital who have such a severe pain, which at times will make the patient sweat because of the pain and patients are wheeled into the cardiac cath labs, presuming it is an acute MI. Only when you have seen angiography being normal and patient landing up into the renal failure, you realize that patient had severe pancreatitis. So any upper abdominal pain, especially with a person who is known to have gallstones, or else if you have had a binge of alcohol or heavy meal after a prolonged fasting, especially if the pain tends to refer to the back, I think we should have a high index of suspicion consult a doctor, do not pass it off as a simple gastritis or overeating or food poisoning. Please rule out acute pancreatitis. So, uh, important uh, signals there, when to look for acute pancreatitis. So, agar pet mein dard hai, aur agar wo peet ki taraf zara, back ki taraf zara, ye bhoat important sign hota hai, ye hum log ko undergraduation mein sikhaya jata hai. Ye agar dard pet mein hai, aur peet ki taraf zara hai, to hamesha, Pancreatitis ko suspect karna chahiye, usko neglect nahi karna chahiye, doctor se uh, uh, paramash zarur karna chahiye. Uh, doctor Saraya, what further test can we do? Establish ho gaya diagnosis. Supposing someone had acute pain and it was radiating to the back and the test did show us pancreatitis. What further tests are done in these cases? Actually, as Dr. Anil Arora has clearly said, that the two, two important tests serum amylase and ultrasound will give us the diagnosis of acute yes. pancreatitis. Now we have to identify the cause of cause. pancreatitis. So ultrasound will give us a clue whether patients are having gallstone disease or not. Mm. Because alcohol and gallstone, these are the two important causes of acute pancreatitis. Alcohol, alcohol and, gallstone and gallstone are the two most important causes of acute pancreatitis. This is very important information then in case there is no history of alcohol intake and there are no gall stones so there is a possibility that the stone was there and it has passed through the bile duct into the into the intestine that is one possibility otherwise we have to rule out other causes like hypercalcemia or patient may be having uh, uh, some drugs which are causing uh, pancreatitis or there may be certain viral infections causing pancreatitis. So we have to find out the cause. Then the second thing is to assess the severity, severity of disease. That is very important. If patients are having organ failure, we do test for that 
and identify whether the patient is having respiratory failure, whether the patient is having renal failure or whether the patient is having other organ failure. In case organ failures are there, then we have to triage patient. That will help in management, whether to transfer that patient into ICU. If a patient is having mild disease, he, he can be managed in the general ward. If having severe disease with organ failure, he has to be shifted to ICU. So first we have to ascertain the severity. So there are various scores which, uh, by which we can decide whether the patient needs uh, care in ICU or in general ward. After that, we have to make the patient pain free. So we have to give painkillers, preferably non-narcotic analgesics. And then initial stages, what happens? There is a lot of extravasation of fluid in the pancreatitis. So we have to give a lot of IV fluids to the patient. Hydration has to be maintained. Then there are certain things like in the management which, which are important. If a patient is in ICU, we observe for a day or two. We keep the patient nil orally initially. If there are so no... nothing to be taken by mouth. Uh, initially, or initially, yeah. initially. But here also I will say that there is a role of early antral nutrition. If patient is having normal bowel sounds and he is pain free, then we should start antral nutrition at the earliest. At the earliest. So if this antral nutrition can be given through a tube, or even if patient can take orally. So if a patient is having mild disease, he can start antral nutrition at the earliest. In case there is ileus, bowel is not moving, then we can defer it. Continue defer it for some time. Yes. Yeah. Then, then, as I have said, that initially it is the inflammatory response. So there is no role of prophylactic antibiotics. We should avoid giving antibiotics to such patients. That is not required. Antibiotics are required in the later stage. If a patient is having pancreatitis for long in hospital, in third week, he is developing fever or features of sepsis, in that case, we can give antibiotics. But initial stage, when there is systemic inflammatory response, antibiotics have no role. And then, then depends the management of complications. So whatever complication patient have, we manage that complication. We'll come to the complications. Okay. Thank you for summarizing the, the management so well. We'll take a short break and be back with you with all information about pancreatitis. Welcome back after the break as we continue our discussion about pancreatitis. So, Dr. Rura, we want to go a little deeper into this in terms of what are the causes and who are the people at risk for getting pancreatitis. So, we mentioned the two most common causes, stones in the gallbladder or alcohol intake. Both seem to be very disparate kind of situations, but they are by far the most common causes. Yeah. Why is that and what other causes should we look at? You see, if you look at the anatomy and way the pancreatic juices, they drain into the intestine, somehow God has made a common opening of the bile duct and the pancreatic duct at a common junction called ampulla of waiter, through which both the juices, pancreatic and biliary juices, 
they pour into the duodenum as the food is entering after being mixed in the stomach with the gastric juice and acid. So, this is a common entry point at that point of time if there is a stone which has migrated during the migration of the bile from the gallbladder into the duodenum. So, if there is a small stone mind you the smaller the stone in the gallbladder more likely it is likely to migrate from the cystic duct and get stuck up at the lower end of the common bile duct. And since there is a common opening of the pancreatic and biliary duct, so there is a back pressure and back channel pressure on the pancreas resulting in an acute injury. So, when you talk of acute injury to the liver, it, in a young female in India the commonest cause will be gallstones. In males who have been drinking alcohol, alcohol will be the most common etiology of acute injury. I think another important point which I like to reiterate over here is when you talk of children more often than not children have trauma which is incipient or which may not be even remembered by the either the children or their parents. Trauma as in physical when trauma. There, is, there is a physical injury. when if you suppose hit somebody with a fist oh. or there is a blunt injury by the handle or somebody kicks into your abdomen. Now, this pancreas as Dr. Amrish very rightly said is lying behind the stomach. If it is lying behind the stomach it is lying in front of the spine. So, if somebody hits you from the front, you have a fixation of the spine at the back. In between you have something called pancreas which gets crushed. In fact, inadvertent trauma, a mild trauma or frank trauma and these are the commonest causes of acute injury to the pancreas in the childhood which most of us tend to forget. So, gallstones in young females or middle aged females, alcohol with those who have been drinking alcohol regularly and trauma. I think this will cover up 90 percent of the causes of acute injury to the liver. Coming the on to the causes of chronic damage as Dr. Anup very eloquently put it earlier, if you have been having repeated attacks of inflammation in the pancreas that will lead to further destruction of the parenchyma which heals by either fibrosis or calcification. The more the destruction more will be the replacement of the native parenchyma or the functioning unit of the pancreas which produces hormones and enzymes more is the replacement by inactive tissue like fibrosis and calcium resulting both in diarrhea which is greasy in nature called steatoria and development of pancreatic or en endocrine dysfunction in the form of diabetes. The commonest causes of chronic pancreatitis in India include alcohol number one and then earlier I am sure Dr. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Amrish who was my incidentally teacher who told me how to recognize pancreas uh, as an undergraduate 40 years ago at all in institute of medical sciences I still remember at that time eating cassava containing food especially yes. in south India was one of the common causes of injury which is now somehow possibly because of our increasing knowledge about the food additives causing injury to the pancreas is becoming infrequent. Then there is a set of congenital abnormalities like pancreas divism or hereditary pancreatitis which can cause chronic pancreatitis. And finally, now you know as the modern medicine is progressing we have come to know a number of genetic defects spink 2 mutation, CFTR mutation in which there is an auto activation of the pancreatic juices within the pancreatic parenchyma that can lead both to acute and chronic pancreatitis. So, I will say trauma in children, gallstone in middle and young females and alcohol and people who have been drinking alcohol will be the commonest causes. So, uh, also autoimmunity sometimes. <coughs> yes. Uh, auto auto yes. So, also then we have uncommon causes like pancreas <laughs> divism, autoimmune disease and uh, as Dr. Saraya said that we have viral infection like chicken pox yeah. or herpes zoster. Even COVID has been implicated yes. as a cause of uh, acute pancreatitis. But this will occur once in a while. More often than not we have obvious causes which will be able to define 90 percent of our causes of acute and chronic pancreatitis. And if you were to say as risk I mean uh, because obesity as we know yes. is one important risk factor. Yeah. Uh, In fact diabetes. the commonest yes the commonest risk factors for development of pancreatitis are if you have congenital abnormalities of the biliopancreatic junction this is called abnormal mm -hmm. pancreatobiliary junction, then you have pancreas divism, then you will have hereditary pancreatitis, you will have genetic defects and specially in children there is a disease, disease entity called cystic fibrosis in which by yeah. default yeah, yeah. there will be
clogging of the pancreatic juices within the parenchyma resulting in a back channel pressure and causing acute exacerbation of underlying chronic pancreatitis. So, congenital abnormalities, hereditary factors, genetic defects, hypercalcemia as Dr. Anoop had already alluded to, if you have hypertriglyceridemia and hypercalcemia that also with passage of time because of the repeated acute injury can lead to chronicity and this will be the obvious risk factor. Smoking is another important yes. risk factor yes. for development of pancreatitis. So, uh, very important information relevant for all of us. Uh, I come back to you Dr. Saraya and I had interrupted you at that time. Very briefly, can you tell us about the management of complications of pancreatitis? Okay. As far as complications are concerned, the, there are local complications in acute pancreatitis. Yes, I will come to this chronic yeah. pancreatitis yeah. little later. In acute pancreatitis, there are local complications. Local complication in the form of initially there is collection of fluid. And then this collection of fluid or necrosis of adjoining area that get infected. So initially we don't have to do anything. We just observe. In case patient is having infected necrosis, which is not resolving, then at times we might have to drain this. This can be done endoscopically, it can be done percutaneously, or it can be done surgically. We avoid surgery till four weeks at least, because planes are not clearly delineated. So surgery should be deferred at least till fourth week. Then there are certain other complications. Other complications like there may be fistula formation. So that also needs treatment. That there is a medical treatment for that and there is a surgical treatment to that. There may be endoscopic ways of treating uh, fistulas or uh, collections. So now we have various modalities at our command through which we can manage these complications. And I mean one thing I can say for sure as an endocrinologist who is an internist who is dealing with all this for so many years, the outcomes in pancreatitis have improved uh, substantially in a very significant you know when we were younger uh, outcomes of pancreatitis were consistently poor and now we see most of our patients recovering well with proper attention and care and modern yes. treatment. Actually there was a time when we started our career in gastroenterology we were subjecting these patients of pancreatitis to surgery little yes. earlier. Yes. So mortality at that time of severe acute pancreatitis was around 50 percent which has gone down over a period of time to less than 20 percent almost. Yeah. But it's still it is pretty yeah. high. Still very high. Pretty high in severe yes. acute pancreatitis. Then came another phase where we were managing these patients initially in ICU. So with good intensive care, yes. we could salvage many patients in the initial stage. And then we deferred surgery after to a later stage and then through minimally invasive means if we can take care of uh, complications that also helped us in reducing the mortality Fantastic. over a period of Fantastic. time. Even Fantastic. now it is around 20-25 percent in severe acute pancreatitis. So it's a severe disease. Yes. It's a severe disease. Yes. So undoubtedly which is why one of the reasons we yeah. thought we should take up this topic here as the public should be aware uh, about how to identify pancreatitis, when to go to the doctor not make a mistake and end up with complications. So we are nearing the end of the program and I give the last word to Dr. Arora. What can we do to prevent pancreatitis or reduce our risk of pancreatitis? I think uh, whenever you have uh, stones in the gallbladder, so whenever the stones are symptomatic, I think get it out at the earliest. In fact, the new concepts are coming up. I am sure Dr. Anoop and Dr. Amrish will agree with me. We used to have repeated debates about asymptomatic gallstones to be left alone or to be operated. I think that debate is possibly settling for the good because of the, you know, humbungous and onerous complication which keep, we keep on seeing on day-to-day -day basis with simple presence of gallstone, especially in the younger population with risk factors. So whenever you have symptomatic gallstones, as soon as your pain settles, please get the gallstones out because this is one of the most important causes of pancreatitis which is absolutely treatable unless you come back with severe attack of pancreatitis and the complications mm. have already been enumerated. Alcohol is something for 
which for us as gastroenterology is not a good thing at all. But the way I think the scenario is moving all over the world including in Delhi with free availability of alcohol, this is becoming increasing menace at least for gastroenterologists and endocrinologists. No, no, every, every specialty. We have had speci yeah. all specialists Absolutely. here and one uniform thing was alcohol. No one likes alcohol in terms of health at all. Absolutely, but still it is becoming yes. freely available, but then we have to use it judicially, yeah. judiciously as I said, other than gallstone, this is the most important cause of alcohol because alcohol other than other medicine is an addicting drug. The more you take, the more you will have a craving for, for it. The more craving you will have, you will have a substantial injury both to the liver as well as the pancreas. So try not to drink alcohol, have your gallstones out, have a regular checkup in terms of your lipid profile and calcium and especially if there is family history of pancreatitis or is your brother, your sister, siblings, parents, cousins, if somebody has a pancreatitis, at some point of time do get your genetic checkup done, do get your serum calcium and lipid profile done, try to avoid, I think very, diet as an important component, try to avoid big gap between the meals. You, so if you have a larger gap as a young man, if you try to eat say four or five parathas at a time with a lot of butter because you are hungry, so that produces a lot of strain on the pancreas to produce a lot of juices. So if your opening of at ampulla or better of the pancreatic duct is compromised, so that is one of the important precipitating factors of pancreatitis, especially in condition like pancreas divisum or other congenital abnormalities of the pancreas. So avoid big meals, especially those containing spices and oils give a small gap between the meals, do not eat too much at a time, avoid alcohol, avoid unnecessary use mm. of drugs as Dr. Anoop said, a number of drugs like steroids, oral contraceptives uh, and uh, azathioprine, they are known to cause pancreatitis. Never ever take a drug without doctor's prescription, take it for a minimum period of time and minimum dose as has been recommended by the doctor. I think these simple measures of remove, having the gallbladder out if you have stones in the gallbladder avoiding alcohol do, do not and not having a big gaps between the meals and do not hog for food if it is available <laughs> at that time yeah. try to unnecessarily uh, uh, not take the drug which have not been recommended by the doctors i think most of the time you'll be able to get away from this monstrous disease which is being discussed today very very valid points uh, thank you dr Ora. thank you dr saraya and thank you viewers for staying with us as we've learned a lot about Ben Kitty today.